Good evening, members, sponsors, and friends. I would like to thank you for taking time uh, to attend this evening's Zoom meeting. As you know, because of the virus, we will continue to conduct our meetings using Zoom technology until we receive permission to be available to be able to begin live meetings. I would like to begin with our meeting with the pledge to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Prior to having Joan introduce our speakers for this evening, which are the candidates for the Town Council and Lovejoy School Board, I would like to ask you to pay extra attention to your emails. As I mentioned in our last meeting, we have a number of events planned leading up to the elections. Some of these events will require your participation, such as our September 11th golf tournament for the Once in a Lifetime Veterans Organization and the County GOP. Others are planned around having our Republican candidates and judges meeting with you in person at patio and cul-de-sac gatherings. These gatherings are your opportunity to speak directly to your candidates while maintaining social distancing to protect your health. I can assure you that your health is of paramount importance to us. The Biden-Harris liberal ticket has zeroed in on Texas and Cullen County in particular. They are spending unnatural amounts of money and bringing out of state volunteers to increase their efforts to turn us purple. Please remember, if you have just moved into Heritage Ranch from some other parts of the area or out of state, you must register to vote. If you need to request a mail-in ballot, which you must do annually, please see our website for information as well, or contact us for additional information. Now I'd like to turn the program over to Joan to have her introduce our guests. Hello everyone. I am very pleased to present to you today the candidates for our local elections. They should have taken place in May, but of course, due to COVID-19, it was impossible. So they have been moved to the general election on uh, November 3rd. Since we have an awful lot of candidates on our ballot, we're trying to present them to you so that you'll understand what you're voting for and be able to select the best possible candidate according to your desire, what you think is important, and how you view each candidate. I do want to say a few words about the local elections. Many times people do not pay attention to the local elections, but look mostly to the presidential and uh, the national and state candidates. But we have to think of it this way. Your local candidates are the closest to your wallet. Whatever happens in Fairview, and in the Lovejoy uh, Independent School District uh, really pertains directly to us since we are the taxpayers and we live at Heritage Ranch. The first group I want to talk to you about are the candidates for the Fairview Town Council. We have running in this election seat two, seat four, and seat six, and each of those seats have two candidates. Keep in mind that generally speaking, this is a nonpartisan election. So each of those candidates, um, are, they are competing against each other. And we are to choose one from each seat. So when you see them presented in front of you, they're going to be speaking about themselves and asking for your vote. Then you have to think of seat two, which is Cynthia Brugge and Greg Custer. Then you will see seat four, and that is Jeanette Grazioli and Larry Little. And seat six, Dr. John Hubbard and Roland Feldman. So you need to vote for three, but each, each vote for a different seat. 
keep that in mind when you make your selection, either by sending in your ballot or by going in person and voting for each of those candidates. Select wisely, listen well first, and you might go to a website if they mention it and learn more about the candidate and select the best you can find. Thank you. I would like to introduce Cynthia Brugge, our councilwoman of the town of Fairview. She was elected in May 2018 and recently completed her first term. She has volunteered to serve our community another two years. The election will be on November 3rd when we will also vote for our President of the United States. Hello, Cynthia. Hello. Cynthia, why is this such an important election? Well, because selecting your representatives is the most important part of the democratic process. You and your fellow citizens are the eyes and ears of our community. And as a council member, I rely on your point of view. It is essential that you vote for council members who are interested in mirroring the desires, the concerns, and the vision of our citizens. I really hadn't thought much about local government. It seems that most people don't vote in local elections because they don't know who to vote for or even what council members do. What do you do, Cynthia? Well, that's a good question. I, I, as a council member, I shoulder quite a bit of responsibility. Your vote is for selecting people who basically decide on everything that happens in your town. Wow, uh, that's a lot of responsibility. Can you give me some examples? Yes, well, when I first um, joined the council, the first thing we did was jump right into the budget, for example. And every year, the taxes have been going up because the values were going up. We went to the effective tax rate that year for the first time, and that was the first time that the taxes hadn't gone up in a long time. We did other things, like we uh, requested that the fire department evacuate the firefighters out of the old building. And we, we requested that they have temporary measures until we could vote on a bond election to build a new fire station. We decided to build a new pumping station and we borrowed six million dollars. And believe it or not, that could be done without the citizens vote. I learned a lot about all the things that we do. Changing the leash law, that was one of our things. We're empowered to change ordinances, to decide what developments are being developed, whether or not we change zoning, you name it. We do everything that runs the town. Wow, that's a lot of responsibility. So tell me, how does your contribution to our council make you unique? Well, I take pride in the fact that I listen to citizens and I listen to all the points of view of the council members. I speak up, I ask questions, and I use what we call professional skepticism in every decision that I make. Okay, uh, what have you done during the first two years that makes you proud? I have insisted on transparency and empowering citizens to be heard. I have learned that when the majority of a council has a goal that they're trying to meet, they become disinterested in what the citizens want and what they need. It's not that they're trying to do that, they're just so focused on certain goals that it's easy to become narrow in your thinking. And so I'm proud that we have established some uh, routines whenever we do our meetings where the citizens are able to give their input at the beginning of the meetings. And they're also able to talk about things whenever we come up to public hearings for um, items that are on the agenda. I've also learned how to get things added to the agenda. And those are all to help figure out know what citizens want and what they need and to dovetail that into making decisions and directing the council the way that we're actually moving forward what the citizens want. Hi everyone, I'm Greg Custer and I'm running for Fairview Town Council seat two and I'm asking for your vote. I'm running for town council because I believe it's important and especially critical now in our town's history 
to represent all of our Fairview residents on all of the issues. Whether you live on acres of land in a million dollar home or a new town home or apartment, you deserve representation. We are all equally Fairview residents. I wanna say thank you to the Heritage Ranch Republican Club for this opportunity with special thanks to Ted and Joan for all your work. No small task in this challenging time during the COVID-19 pandemic. I appreciate the opportunity to introduce myself and my family. Uh, Julie and I have been married for 48 years. We have two adult kids and two grandchildren. Julie and I have lived in Fairview for 13 years. We are active members of Stonebriar Community Church. I'm a retired United States Air Force Colonel with 31 years of active military service. In 2006, after retiring from the Air Force, I began a second career working for Ross Perot at Perot Systems, an information technology services company, doing business development and leading a team of project managers. In 2010, Michael Dell bought Perot Systems and I worked for Dell Technologies, leading a team of project managers until retiring in 2014. When it comes to leadership roles here in Fairview, currently I'm the chairman of the Fairview Town Planning and Zoning Commission. Previously, I was chairman of the Town Zoning Board of Adjustments. I was elected as the first president of the Sloan Creek Homeowners Association with the unique responsibility of transitioning from the developer to the residents. Also, I'm the co-founder of the Fairview Rotary Club and previously served as its president. I believe leadership roles on town boards and commissions have prepared me to serve on the town council. I think there's no substitute for experienced leadership. I've been a registered voter since I was 18. I've been a Texas resident for 40 years. I hold a bachelor's degree and master's degree in education. While on active duty and stationed at Warner Robins, Georgia, I was elected chairman of the local school board. I've also served as an adjunct professor, teaching various subjects on the college level. I have good common sense and an even temperament, perhaps two most important characteristics you want for your elected officials. We need council members who treat fellow residents and town staff with respect while adhering to town ordinances and Texas state laws. Some of the issues that I believe are important and that I will work to promote are maintaining low taxes and fiscal responsibility, manage residential and commercial growth, continue to provide superior public safety services, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, understanding concerns about rainwater uh, damage issues and assisting residents to correct those managed and improved town water supplies, use and improvement of town to resident communications. In 2019, I campaigned for the fire station bond and will continue to support the rebuilding of fire station one. I will work to support the EDC and CDC structure and how those funds are used with the best interest of the town always in mind. I'm in favor of new and improved roads, parks and trail systems as we are able to financially support them. Three big picture goals that I have, I will work to foster a unifying vision for Fairview, one that unites us rather than divides based on where in town we reside. I will work to build your confidence in our elected leaders and our town staff, and I will work to enhance an effective communication plan. In conclusion then, for more information, please go to my website, it's custerforfairview.com. If you elect me to our town council seat two, I promise to represent all the residents of Fairview, no matter where you live. Thank you for your time. I'm asking for your vote on November 3rd. God bless. Hi, my name is Jeanette Grazioli, and I am running for Fairview Town Council, seat four. My husband and I chose Fairview 15 years ago to plant roots and raise our family. It offered everything we wanted, two exemplary school districts, large home sites, and that small town, everybody knows your neighbor feel. But best of all, we were minutes from everything a city had to offer. 
We now have two children. Our son is 14 years old and will be in eighth grade at Willow Springs Middle School, where he loves to play rugby and football. Our daughter is 16 and will be a junior at Lovejoy High School, where she's on the varsity cheer squad and also does competitive cheer. Over the past 15 years, I've seen a lot of changes in Fairview. One of the things I miss the most is the sign, Keeping It Country. I've seen farms go away, roads being expanded, stop signs replaced by traffic lights, and large lots being subdivided for development. I strive to make a difference and be involved in our community. A few years after moving to Fairview, I was one of the founding board members for what is now known as the Lovejoy Preschool PTA. I have served on several PTA and booster boards over the years. I am currently treasurer for the Lovejoy Cheer Booster Club, where in the month of February, Dr. Goddard, the Lovejoy superintendent, recognized us for being his leadership team of the month. I have a BBA in finance from Eastern Michigan University. I started to work on my MBA, but decided to stay at home and raise our family instead. I have worked at General Motors Acceptance Corporation, Toyota Lexus Financial and Strasburger and Price Law Firm in Dallas. I have served on the CRG, the Citizens Resource Group for Fairview, where over 50 Fairview citizens work together to find a balance between the $25 million bond and the needs of our town. The CRG also fought for safe temporary housing for our firefighters until we could agree on and approve a plan for Fire Station 1 and finish its construction. I currently serve on the Planning and Zoning Commission. One of the most impactful meetings I ever had as a Planning and Zoning Commissioner was in November when it was proposed to us to rezone the current Edward Jones building at Highway 5 and Bluebird Lane, take that current building and another home adjacent to it and create a new two-story, 35 foot tall, over 11,000 square foot building with two parking lots along two sides of the building. We had an overwhelming response from the citizens of Bluebird Lane asking us to preserve the, one of the original neighborhoods of Fairview, which they have called home, some have called home since the late 1960s. Planning and zoning unanimously opposed the rezoning. After the meeting, we had numerous residents from Bluebird Lane come up and thank us for what we had done in preserving, preserving their neighborhood. In February, we also fought to get topography and drainage reports on any property that might be affected by future rezoning. I've always told my kids, don't sit around and complain, but go out there and get involved and make a difference. That is why I wanna be the next councilwoman for Fairview. Fairview is a unique town. We have Heritage Ranch, a community within a community on our east side of town, and the west side, which hosts both, re which hosts both residential and commercial in our commercial district. All these areas are very important to the community and the diversity of Fairview. It is important that the town represents the interests of all of these areas. I want to ensure future development is in line with the current zoning of Fairview. I believe we can obtain that goal by making strategic decisions regarding future growth. Fairview needs a plan that will allow the town to be proactive not reactive for those needs. We need to understand the impact development will have on traffic flow, drainage, and infrastructure needs. We need to advocate that developers are responsible for those future needs and not taxpayers, and ensure responsible use of our town funds. I believe by informing and listening to our residents, we create a transparent community. With transparency, we can understand the needs and wants of our residents and make decisions to grow Fairview responsibly. When I serve the community as your next councilwoman, I will fight to be the voice for all of Fairview's residents so we can accomplish these goals together. Please vote for Jeanette Grazioli, seat four, Fairview Town Council on November 3rd. And thank you for your time.
Howdy, I'm Larry Little running for Fairview Town Council seat four, which is an open seat. Fairview is a great place to live, work, and raise a family. I know because I've lived here for over 18 years. I am seeking this position to keep Fairview great by ensuring we have the necessary resources and services that our residents deserve and expect while keeping taxes low. I enjoy serving the community as the finance chair of First United Methodist Church of McKinney and a member of the Fairview Rotary. My wife Pam and I are founding members of the Fairview Children's Theater and support the Samaritan Inn, the Collin County Boys and Girls Club, Veterans of North Texas, and the SPCA. We are blessed to have two married children, a son and a daughter, and three grandsons ages nine, five, and five, all living in McKinney. I was born and grew up in Bryan College Station, Texas. After graduating from Texas A&M, I started Ace Fence Company and have owned and operated it for over 40 years. Today, it is the largest fence company in the DFW area. As you can imagine, I have weathered many financial ups and downs through the years. Even in the downturn of 2008 and 9, Ace Fence operated profitably and kept all of its employees working. With 40 years of business experience, I know the importance of sound fiscal policy and how to make hard decisions. This experience will be useful as the town faces many business challenges and concerns in the weeks and months ahead. Here's what I want to accomplish. Staying on top, and responding effectively to the COVID-19 issues the town will face. It is essential that the council and town staff act promptly and responsibly regarding the impact of COVID-19 in order to keep our residents safe and informed. The next point is extremely important to all residents. We need to maintain the outstanding bond rating of AA plus and the excellent financial position the town leadership has achieved and making sure the town audit is exceptional as it has been in years past. It is reassuring to know that your town is in outstanding financial shape. I will work to keep our taxes low while always having a balanced budget which the town has accomplished in recent years. I supported fire station number one and look forward to its completion in 2021. Our first responders, fire, police, and public works are very deserving of our resident support. We need to thank and treat them with respect that they deserve. Many residents are concerned about the future development in Fairview. My goal is to ensure that future development fits our country atmosphere. Our home is on over five acres and we really enjoy our space. I will work hard to keep open space in Fairview. We need to improve flooding and drainage problems. Something happening now is Congressman Van Taylor looking into the issue of Sloan Creek and Wilson Creek to clean them out for a better flow into Lake Levon. When this happens, it will alleviate some of these problems in Fairview. We need to support Lincoln Properties to help Fairview Town Center attract businesses. Fairview Town Center needs to be successful. I know and have relationships with elected national, state, and county officials, which will help in advocating for Fairview in the regional issue of water, education, and transportation. Finally, my conservative business practices, honesty, integrity, responsibility, and common sense make me the best choice for Fairview Town Council seat four. Find out more about me at LarryForFairview.com, four is a number, or call me if you have any questions or would like a yard sign at 214-876-3127. I like to talk to folks. I respectfully ask for your vote to serve the residents of Fairview. Let's work together to keep Fairview great. Thank you for your time and stay safe.
Hi, my name is John Hubbard. I've been asked to make this video so you can learn more about me and why I want your vote for Town Council Seat 6. At this time, uh, I would like to introduce John Hubbard, who is running for Seat 6 for the Town Council. John. I am overwhelmed. I am so happy everyone is here today. Running for town council is probably the best thing and the scariest thing that I have done in a long time. My name is John Hubbard. I am married to my lovely wife, Marion. I have three children and three grandchildren. I live in the villas in the park for over six years. My connection to the town, however, goes back further than six years. I was actually back around the turn of the century that sounds weird to say, but in 1998, I was assistant town manager in Fairview. What I love about my experience as assistant town manager is working with the people, council, staff, and residents that had a vision on how the town should develop. The town developed a strategic plan, which after collaboration with residents, became a blueprint on how the town to grow. One of the places that is included in that vision is Heritage Ranch. My philosophy in working with others is that there is no us versus them, only us. I have 25 years of public service. I have held positions as city administrator, assistant town administrator, assistant city manager, and director of economic development. I am currently a member of the business faculty at UNT Dallas, where I teach economics, organizational development, and logistics. I'm also a certified economic developer, economic development finance professional, and a professional community and economic development director. I'm currently a member of the Theory Parks Advisory Board. Other community endeavors include board memberships on the Methodist Charlton Advisory Board and the Texas Economic Development Council. I'm also immediate past president of the 13-time International Gold Medalist Chorus, the vocal majority of Dallas, Texas. Why am I running for Town Council Seat 6? I have spent my entire career serving others. I have volunteered my time to help other communities with their economic development goals. I have a passion for Fairview, and I want to do that here. I've worked it, I've taught it. Now I will use my abilities to serve the town of Fairview. Hello Fairview, my name is Roland Feldman. I'm running for Fairview Town Council seat six and I'm asking for your vote on November 3rd. Uh, a little background on myself. Uh, four years ago, my wife and I moved the family uh, to Fairview because we love the nature, we love the community, and we love the people that make Fairview the community that it is. I have two older boys that attend Texas A&M and a younger girl who is a senior at Lovejoy High School and my wife is a local real estate agent. A little background on myself, uh, for the last 25 years, I've done business and development on a global basis, uh, run a full profit and loss. So basically what that means is I can look at uh, the whole operation and look at the best and the most efficient way to run those business aspects. Uh, we can apply a lot of these things to what Fairview has done in town governor, all, government, although a little different, but could still be applied the same way. Uh, we're a small town, we're nine square miles and 9,000 people. Uh, we wanna keep the community and the lifestyle for Fairview uh, the way most people here in town and why they moved uh, to Fairview. For this election, my campaign slogan is promises made, promises kept. In 2018, I promised two things. One is the fire station, the firefighters at Fire Station One, and two taxes. It took 90 days to, to come up with a solution for Fire Station One, move the firefighters out of the deplorable 
condemned building that they were living in. And also the previous council wanted to build a new fire station for $25 million. We, we've now taken that down to $8 million, which keeps your taxes low. It, it ultimately affects your taxes. Over the last two years, the town staff has also, in both the budget process, wanted to raise your taxes. We have fought hard, I have fought hard, to make sure your taxes stay low. Uh, there's many other aspects and many things that we still need to do. I'm very focused on representing the community, uh, representing your voice, uh, and making sure that your tax dollars, again, are spent very wisely. My goals for the next two years are health, safety, and the prosperity of citizens of Fairview in these trying times of corona and civil unrest. One perfect example is the chief of police came to the last, last town council meeting and requested protective equipment for his team. It's up to us to make sure that as they protect us, we protect them. Uh, I'm fully supportive of our public servants in the community. One other issue that's affecting Fairview is drainage. As we grow and develop, uh, we have developers that are shedding water onto adjacent properties and are adversely affecting. And I wanna make sure that as we build, we don't adversely affect the neighboring properties and our current residents of Fairview. One other side effect of growth is density and traffic. I wanna make sure that you as the residents of Fairview Envision Fairview in the next upcoming few years and that your voice is heard within the council that how you want to see Fairview grow. As it grows, we're going to affect traffic and we're going to affect density. We want to make sure that we're, we have plans in place and that our infrastructure supports all that growth. And so I want to be your voice in the community to support those endeavors. I ask for your vote in 2020 so I can continue my work and be your voice in the community. Thank you. I want to thank Heritage Ranch and Heritage Ranch Country Club for giving me this opportunity to talk to this community. This is part two of the local elections. And this election will be for the LISD School Board, Board of Trustees. In this election, we actually have three positions running. There is one that's pending due to a, uh, a place coming open uh, we haven't included that place because the candidate is still unknown, but that place only has one candidate. What I'm going to show you in the next section are the following positions, position five, position four, and position seven. Position five is the only one that actually has opposition. In position five, you'll find London O'Dowd and Marvin Bobo. They are going to speak about themselves and appeal for your vote. When they are finished, we have two more positions. We've asked the other two candidates who are unopposed, we've asked them to also be included in this uh, presentation so that you can get to know who is representing us and uh, working with the LISD school because that's where our taxes are going and it's good to know who they are. So this the other two are position four Ann Smith and position seven Barrett Owens. They do not have opposition, but they are on the ballot. So they will automatically have your vote if you press uh, the, the spot where they appear. I also ask you 
whatever you do, please don't stop at the top of the ballot. The top of the ballot is always our national, uh, the president, vice president, our, our legislators in Washington, senators, and then go all the way down the ballot because everyone is important. Thank you for being interested in finding all the candidates and for voting. Thanks. Hi, my name is London O'Dowd. I want to thank the Heritage Ranch Republican Club for the opportunity to speak with you today. The Republican Club has asked me to answer two questions. The first being, why am I qualified for the position of board trustee? And what's the first issue I would handle if I did get on the board? Well, my background is I am a certified public accountant licensed in California and Arizona. I'm also a licensed attorney in licensed in the states of Texas, New York, and Arizona. I graduated from college in 1990 and began my career as a certified public accountant in the early 1990s in Los Angeles, California. I worked with Ernst & Young, or what is now Ernst & Young, as well as Deloitte & Touche. I'm an alumni of both, uh, both firms. My clients included several large financial institutions, including Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and Security Pacific, as well as several other major development companies, including Starwood Lodging. I began my career as an attorney in Dallas in 1997 and worked with Jenkins and Gilchrist, the largest law firm uh, based in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. My clients as an attorney include several major banks, multi-billion dollar REITs, and several large family office development companies. My practice also includes governmental contracting, including support for counterintelligence consulting companies, and part of what I do as an attorney is to advise people on how to operate companies, how to properly run them, how to be directors. If elected to the board, one of the first things that I will do is to deep dive into the budget. To be able to pass a budget, which is the primary function of the board, that and oversight of the superintendent, you need to have an understanding of the numbers. To be able to get into a budget, a $45 million budget, with the single largest line item being labor, uh, you need to understand how to do a department by department analysis to be able to review the numbers, to be able to analyze them over multiple years, see how they've been trending, and see whether or not they've been used in an efficient manner. If you don't have that background, then you are not making informed decisions. One of my primary goals in running for a board of trustees is to take my extensive financial, accounting, and legal backgrounds and put it to work for, the, for Lovejoy ISD. My wife and I have three children. We've been coaching soccer, football, baseball over the years, uh, doing Indian princess guides, Boy Scouts. And once we moved to Lovejoy, we also started supporting the, uh, the schools, the PTA, PTO, various booster clubs, and we want to give back. We love the school district, and I want to make certain that we are running in an efficient, effective manner, and I'm willing to put my time in to help that process. I hope you will give me consideration, and I thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Marvin Bobo. I'm running for position five of the Lovejoy ISD Board of Trustees. My campaign motto is past, present, and future. If you watch this short video, I hope you see why. I have experienced through my children the Lovejoy sports programs, incredible band program, GT, 504 process, STEM, robotics, dual credit, and AP courses. 
As of today, I believe I will be the only board member, if elected, that will have an elementary student and thus a voice for our younger population. I'm a San Antonio native, born and raised there until I went to college at Abilene Christian University, where I graduated with a finance degree and was employed with Arthur Anderson upon graduation. I also pursued my master's degree and received an MBA in 1999 from Southern Methodist University. I have a 30 plus year career in technology consulting with some of the biggest companies in America, including Microsoft, Arthur Anderson, National Health Labs, Raytheon, and many others. Recently, I created a real estate investment company with my twin brother called Dashville Real Estate Solutions. I attend church at Chase Oak Sloan Creek Campus. Other volunteer work includes scouts with PAC 358 and Troop 1776 in Plano. I am honored to have received my wood badge in leadership from scouting. I also enjoy biking with the Heritage Ranch Bike Club, play computer and board games, reading, smoking meats, and volunteering. I am a lifelong fiscal conservative that can understand prudent stewardship of public funds. Having managed large budgets in my career, I can understand and balance risk and reward. I participated in the Long Range Planning Committee early on in the district's growth to plan for the future wisely. I continue to help by volunteering for Living Lovejoy 2025 action teams. I have walked the walk and talked the talk as seen with an award I received from the Lovejoy School Board for outstanding service to the community. I have been a part of every school PTA, numerous booster clubs, scouting, incubator, U mentoring program. I supported heart campouts and a proud husband of a foundation director. I have been president of the Commons of Camden HOA and have recently been involved in the Lucas Recycling Initiative. Educating young minds in the current pandemic is a challenge being faced by everyone, not just school districts. I believe my knowledge of the Lovejoy Way can help be a steady hand as the school district navigates the ever-changing pandemic landscape. Another challenge the school district is facing is the baffling funding formulas from the state of Texas. If elected, I would love to fight at the state level to create clear and transparent funding formulas that give us that gives the Lovejoy School District adequate funding for all students. Because I have lived here in Lovejoy for 15 years, I am honored to have the endorsements of several folks who live here and have lived here for a long time. Endorsements such as former board members Ann Casey, Julie James, Scott Christensen, and Robin Wells. I also have the endorsement of a former founding member of the Lovejoy Foundation for Lovejoy Schools, Beth Hansen. Wayne Millsap has also endorsed me from the Lucas City Council. These people know me well and they know my work ethic and my commitment to the community. For more information, you can go to my website at boboforlojo.com. That's bobo, the number four, lojo.com. Or you can follow me on all the social media channels, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Bobo for Lojo. Again, Bobo, the number four, Lojo. Thank you, and I'd love to have your vote come this November. Hi, my name is Ann Smith, and I am the secretary for the Lovejoy ISD Board of Trustees. Um, thank you to the folks at Heritage Ranch for including me in this video uh, candidate forum. Um, I was elected in May 2017 to the school board after serving as uh, a local volunteer upon moving here in 2011. Um, I worked uh, as PTA president for Lovejoy Elementary as well as Sloan Creek, uh, was highly involved with the Foundation for Lovejoy Schools, and have continued volunteering with Willow Springs and Lovejoy High School and the Lovejoy ISD Council of PTAs. Um, it's been an honor and pleasure serving you on the school board. Um, my son is a sophomore at the high school. My daughter is a freshman and I've been married to my husband for approximately 20 years. Um, some of the things I'm most proud of upon serving uh, you all on the board, um, I really am so grateful we implemented our Lovejoy safety and security program. I think we're an, a leader in education in this program and I'm grateful that I was part of the board that was able to help uh, get that established. Um, and I'm also super grateful um, to be part of the team that hired Dr. Mike Goddard. I think he's been a great addition to the Red Building, and I'm honored that he's our Lovejoy superintendent. Um, going forward, I think we need to continue being fiscally responsible, making sure we're smart with our taxpayer dollars. Um, I'm pleased to announce we did pass a balanced budget 
uh, for our fiscal year starting July 1, 2020. Uh, not dipping into fund balance is a fabulous thing, and I look forward to us doing more of that, uh, not having to dip into fund balance. And then also I feel like it's very important that uh, with the times we're in with COVID-19 and this pandemic, that we work very hard to be uh, diligent and keeping kids safe, but also giving them the opportunities to get back to in-person school. Um, I think it's important for social emotional well-being of kids to give them the opportunity to do their activities, be with their peers, friends, teachers. Um, so I'm going to continue hoping and praying and trying to make good decisions to keep kids safe, but also give families choices uh, to give those kids those opportunities. Um, thank you again for all your support. It's been an honor to serve you. Uh, I don't have an opponent this November, but I am excited uh, for the election and provided I get one vote, I'll be returning uh, to the board for three more years. So thank you again for the opportunity. Uh, it's an honor to represent you and I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Good evening, Heritage Ranch. My name is Anthony Barrett Owens. Uh, I go by Barrett and uh, I serve in position seven for the Lovejoy School Board. My wife Paige and I live in the district and have for the past 15 years. We have three children, Jade, 15, who's a sophomore at Lovejoy High School, Cooper, 13, who's a seventh grader at Willow Springs, and Macy, who's 11 and going into the fifth grade at Sloan Creek. We live in Lucas off Forest Grove Road. My mom, Lana, was a resident of Heritage Ranch for nine years over on Wrangler Drive. She recently moved over to Stacy Ridge. Also, my sister, Brittany, lives in the district, has two boys, Nathan and Ryan. Ryan is a kindergartner at Lovejoy Elementary, um, and uh, we love spending time with them. Professionally, I own and operate Owens Warford Custom Homes and also uh, Capacity Lending. My background is in construction, real estate, banking, and finance. Prior to home building, I was a chief lending officer and served on the board of directors of First National Bank of Trenton. My wife, Paige, owns and operates Owens Realtors. Our businesses are very much rooted in the community as well as the surrounding area. From 2010 to 2016, I volunteered my time as a director on the Education Foundation Board, Foundation for Lovejoy Schools. During that time, I served the roles as treasurer, VP, and president. I joined the board in October of 2019, and board service in 2019-2020 was nothing short of action-packed. Notably, we were able to accomplish some key objectives. We engaged our community and consultants to develop an updated strategic plan. We updated our demographic study and incorporated the current trends into our planning and budgeting process. We were able to comprise a priority of what the heart of Lovejoy actually is and uh, help enhance the uh, graduate profile foundational elements. We passed and we were able to pass and adopt a balanced budget most recently. Going into 2021, we faced many challenges around the following issues. COVID, number one. COVID has several things about it that are challenging. One is actually being able to go to school and comply with the requirements being put on us by all of the government agencies that oversee our activities, including TEA. Um, secondly, school funding. It's a challenge, it has been a challenge, it's gonna continue to be a challenge. It's tough to finance a district on residential property taxes. And we have to continue to work with the state to ensure that we get our fair share and that we're able to continue to protect this Lovejoy tradition of excellence that we've developed. The third thing that's big in my mind and my time is student em employee morale and welfare. The COVID challenge comes to us on many fronts. One is we wanna be back in school, but two is we wanna help our, fam our kids, our families and our teachers have good social systems to be able to interact. And while we're um, challenged by having everyone on site, the social aspects of going to school are so important to the learning process and to the uh, welfare of our kids and our teachers. Uh, now more than ever, positive leadership and perspective is needed. So many things that we can't control, but what we can is our attitude and our perspective. And uh, I challenge all of our leaders to continue to stay positive and help us work towards the goal of raising amazing children and educating them for the future. It's a pleasure and honor to serve Lovejoy as a, as, a, as a trustee. I thank you for taking the time to see this video and letting us get to know you and letting you get to know us. And thank you so much. Have a great evening. In closing, on behalf of the Republican Club at Heritage Ranch, I'd like to thank our speakers and, and again, request that you pay additional 
attention to your emails for our upcoming events and latest developments. As always, you are able to follow all of the upcoming events on our website. Now for the fun part of the meeting. Bob, can you please tell me who is number seven on our Zoom call? Number seven on the list is Kathy Gonzalez. You have just won a Trump hat that will be delivered to your home. Thanks again for this for, for this evening and wishing you the best of health. Take care. <laughs>